It's time for tea, whichever the way you like it. Welcome to Plus TV, Africa's Tea Time. I am Ife Oshunke, and joining me this morning is Ife Homai. Hey. Hi. How you doing, man? Well, how are you? Not bad at all, you know. Feeling jiggy. Feeling jiggy? Yeah. That's good. The week uh, is almost over. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm smelling the weekend yeah, already. I am as well, and I'm I looking forward to the me weekend, because my weekend right now, you know. Oh, okay. I'm about to be the one to do ah, the okay. gish, gish, gish uh, for you. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to... <laughs> relax and do nothing i want a day where i just don't have to do anything after last weekend i think you deserve it right yeah yeah a bit much. all right so let's talk about the first story of the day because that's what we're doing here today right all right according to a day to i told me wellington i went on social media for almost three months last year the most peace i've had traveled with my baby did fun things, took very few pictures, spent a lot of time in the presence of god at some of the most important meetings of my life and none of it is online. I get to keep it for me. The best, in fact, I should go off again to end the year. Hmm. I don't know why social media wouldn't allow you to do all of those things that you've just mentioned. In my opinion, mm. I, I don't see anything brand. It's not yeah, like not putting in, it out there. But, but, but what I'm saying is, all these things that she's listed, why is that affecting... Why, what, why is social media stopping you from having that? From having to take a trip with your bae, to have private time, to... I don't know. If maybe this was an influencer that lived, I'm a celebrity, Sha. Maybe I don't know the realities of things. I don't know the kind of pressure that she's under. But for a social media user that's just using it for vibes, mm. it hasn't changed much about my life. If I'm tired, I take it off. I don't need to detoxify myself from social media. Maybe because I'm not just that into it and I'm not, it's not, um, what's it called, controlling my life. Maybe mm. it's a bit different for her. She needs to be able to step back from it. But for me personally, I wasn't moved or like wild or like she needs an applause because it feels like something you can achieve even with social media. Um, I think, um, like you said, um, she's a celebrity, so the celebrity lifestyle is different. For everything you wear, top to bottom, somebody mm -hmm. has something to say about it. And those things, these people are human. It affects their mental health. Imagine you're feeling all good about yourself. You post a picture that you think is nice, and somebody goes there to be like, look at this bend down select. Mm -hmm. Do you get like stuff like that? So for three months straight without no negative um, comments from nobody. We're showing sure negative with your comments from real life. What's all this? I don't know. No, Maybe no. It, in real life, depending on where you're hanging out, if you're hanging out around toxic people, of course you will get negative. There's no comments. human being that doesn't have an inch of or an ounce of negativity to offer in a day, even if it's as simple as. So you're telling me that her friends cannot say, "Oh, babes, I don't really like this hairstyle," or everyone is just like. The way you just said it is not the house. way a troll Social would say media, it. I guess so. Do you understand? Yeah. Fair. So yeah, and. Um, um, the fact that sometimes you need to compartmentalize your life as well. You mm. can't just put everything out there. There has to be times where you keep some things off social media, such as family, such as your love life, such as your spiritual life. She says she got to spend time in the presence of so the social Lord. Social media is affecting her from doing that. I don't, okay, you see. Okay, okay some people. I li I'm lacking empathy on this story, and I think it's honestly maybe because I'm not a celebrity and I don't have that much trolls coming on me. I'm not going to say that I'm completely free of trolls or, that I, or I don't understand that social media can be a bit toxic. Mm. But it's really simple for me. It's in my head, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. She's making it seem like it's some like, overrated thing. Like, I feel like you can continue life as an adult without staring around social I media. I hope you, I would like to hear you say the same thing in the next three years because I'm mm -hmm. sure maybe by then you would be a celebrity, mm -hmm. so maybe you would still be able to say maybe. this. Maybe I'll be able to empathize but, with her yeah. more. I'll, I'll, I'll remember but this But I think I know where she's coming I? from. Okay, I'm not a celebrity. So yeah. No, calm down. Oh, but oh. I think I know. No, there are just times where you just need that. You know, there was, there was a time I did the same too. I went off social media for a long time. A lot of people couldn't find me until recently when they started seeing my work and a lot of people are coming back like dude they just went my do you understand mm. but i feel like those people i didn't even have to talk to them because even now that i'm talking to them they're not bringing anything to the table they are mm. still reminding you of your past mm. so sometimes it's just good to just cut off a lot of people of and then just leave and, your yes. life okay. to the fullest you see when you put that conversation like that i can understand that where there's some points where you need to detoxify and it doesn't matter where it is it could be social media it could be friends it could yeah. be Sometimes work even, and you just need to, you know, take a take a step back and breathe or whatever. I understand that. I think maybe for me, the problem with this story was that it was emphasizing too much of like a 
um, like there was a like the, there was like a direct impact between achieving all those things on social media. Like you can't have both of them, and that's what it's kind of turning me off on the story that you can't hang out with your bae and get closer to God and have meetings. I don't go online. And still be on social media. Like I feel like you can be on social media. That, those two things well, don't yeah, take away from each other. I, I, I don't know. Maybe when she says went off social media completely, I think what she meant was that she privatized her life. She wasn't posting yeah. a lot of okay. stuff, but it doesn't mean she wasn't checking what was going on on social media. I want to believe no one, unless you're leading, living under a rock. You, it's mm -hmm. almost inevitable not to see what's going on on social media. Matter of fact, you Even go WhatsApp, on Google. Yeah. yeah, matter of fact, you go on Google and then you see some things that will still lead you to Instagram, to mm -hmm. Twitter, to a lot of other platforms. So I don't think she stayed off completely, but putting her own life out there, I think she just said she had three months to compete compartmentalize and her life. Things uh, yes, well. And Yes, and privatize things. It clearly worked Amazing. for her. So yeah, it worked for her. And, and then whatever works for you, that's 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 what I'm, that's that's I'm what we preach over that. here. Love to see it. Exactly. All right, so moving on to the next story. Employees of Ellen DeGeneres are not impressed with her apology, especially after her first appearance on the show. Ellen DeGeneres' apology to her current and former talk show employees fell on Flat, fell flat on Monday, 21st September 2020. They have accused her of using their issues to pump up ratings, with one of them saying, not only did Ellen turn my trauma, turn our traumas into a joke, she somehow managed to make this about her. Oh, one wow. former employee told BuzzFeed News when she said, oh, my summer was great and that was supposed to be funny. I thought, it's not funny that you had a rough summer because everyone was calling you out for the allegations of your toxic work environment and now you're the one suffering. What do you think? Do you think people are real overreacting? I think people really do enjoy um, when you are down. I think people yeah. really enjoy that. They want her to be... It's, they've gone past, I want you to be sorry. Mm. They want her to be in the state of I'm sorry forever and mm. ever. So let's even change the narrative, which I don't believe in, but for, for what it is... Um, she was toxic, yes, and she did this. She created this environment at work you that was really she... bad. No, I don't. But I'm just saying. Let's take that story, right? That she did what she did, and it was true and legit. That yeah, um, Ellen was part, or a big player in making the environment toxic. All right, and then now she's seen that okay, it's wrong because people are coming out to obviously talk about it, and it's really serious. And she's hearing it from the horse's mouth really personally. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have been able to say those things to her, which is why they took it to BuzzFeed, right? So she's heard it and blah, blah, blah. She's now, uh, like, she's been woke and she's sorry about it and she's moved on. And now she's moving, taking her show and she's moving on. What's the problem with that? So I don't understand why an apology one time is not enough. That she's now making jokes and she's moving on with the show. You decided to go to BuzzFeed and talk about Ellen. You cannot tell me that you don't know that that would up the ratings. You don't. You cannot tell me that that would not make what people to so want to go and. Unconsciously, you're even open. Exactly, the you're the one who did that, and it's still her life. It is still her her business. Mm. Of course, she is going to want to use that opportunity to push even further. Like, I, I'm sorry, do you want her to cut herself, bring out blood, and? Say I'm sorry and end the this show is my and sacrifice yeah you know guys. like you want her to basically <laughs> give give you her soul to say that she's up see guy move on with life I'm sorry that you had a toxic environment whatever get over it like it's not the end of the world she says she's sorry move on if you don't want to work there go somewhere else I'm pretty sure your talent if you could make it to Ellen I'm pretty sure there'll be other people that you can work for Ellen will work on what she needs to work on let's move on I think that that's applicable to every sphere of life yeah. right people just feel like okay the fact that you've done them wrong one time and after you apologize mm. you have to remain you know yeah. kicking, kissing their behind yeah. because you did them wrong dude yeah. i've apologized yeah. i've agreed them wrong so yeah. can we just get back to the way things were but they want you to stay stuck but um unfortunately we need to go on a break and tea time will be right back after the short break thank you Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And moving on to the stories for the day. An incident took place on September 6th at Smith Point Beach on Fire Island that saw Cardi B and her sister, NSC Carolina, and Carolina's girlfriend, Michelle Diaz, reportedly being sued by a group of beachgoers who claim they have been publicly defamed. They claim they were peaceful Suffolk County residents quietly enjoying a Sunday at the Smith Point Beach with their families when rap celebrities 
County, NSC Carolina, suddenly approached them, insulting, assaulting, defaming, and threatening them, all the while videotaping them because one of them wore a MAGA art. A MAGA art is a Make America Great Again art. Cardi shared a video of the altercation on her Instagram stories on September 6th with her sister, then tweeted in a, in, then her sister tweeted in a response to Candace Owens' claim that her music contributes to the disintegration of black culture and values. When I, when I followed the story and I saw that Candice got involved, I just got really turned off mm. by the whole thing. I've always said it on this table that I don't like to put my energy on uh, American politics because I just I just feel like it's it's like um, what's it called neocolonization. Like there's still this this idea that other people must be concerned about your mm. your politics, but nobody co is concerned about Edo politics or Nigerian politics or Brazil's politics. So why are we stressing so much about? America, that's my, that's my intention, that's my dream. But I know that's not the reality because America influences the entire world. So yeah, it is our business on how things are going on there, which is why I'm even going to stress a little bit on this conversation. Um, it is a bit offensive to, you know, it, it, it's very easy to become the thing that you're fighting against. Mm. So if you're saying that somebody is racist, right? We all know a group of people, hush, hush. We all know that these people stand for racist things, right? Mm. Okay. But there is still the level, because they're human beings, they still have a right to believe in that one, especially if their actions haven't actually been proven to cause harm to another mm. person, right? So if, if that's the case, and then you go about, you on the right side, quote unquote, because it's all perspective, isn't it? Everyone thinks that their, their side is the correct side. Mm -hmm. Even the racists will argue with you that they're not racist, they are whatever, whatever. So for you to then, um, even on your good side, then um, harass somebody for... Those say um, they're Republicans. Yes, well, yeah, for har harassing somebody, exactly, for harassing somebody for wearing a hat that symbolizes Trump and everything that he stands for, I think you've made uh, two wrongs instead of yeah. a right. I always used to say something, every time somebody offends me, I always use everything inside of me to calm down so that the way I respond, I won't take away from what the person has done. Because if the person does something wrong and I respond rudely or I say something, it will not be about what the person has done to me anymore. It will be about how I responded. So I think it's one of those things. And they had good intentions. Obviously, we know what the hat represents. And mm. it's quite oppressive. And the Black Lives Matter movement is stemmed from that and all that type of stuff. It's good, good intentions. But you still don't have any rights to go harassing people and calling them names because they're wearing a hat. I, I, I really don't think so. I like the fact that you brought that up because an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. So if mm -hmm. you're fighting against something and then you keep coming out to say, fight other people for what you're fighting against, and yeah. it's their belief. So, and I think everybody has um, a right to their beliefs and um, opinions and whatever they choose to, or whatever political party they choose to go for, regardless mm -hmm. of race. So right now the tables are turning and I, I like the fact that that is actually happening because sometimes black people tend to play the victim a lot mm. as sometimes even when we're doing wrong mm. we want to play the black race card like i'm black that's mm. why they're trying to harass me you see a lot of celebrities that leave the shores of this country no okay no let's even leave nigerian celebrities now let's talk about american celebrities you see them smoking in their cars when they're mm. driving and they're doing the instagram live videos mm. if they get pulled over for any reason by a cop now mm. and then you don't have the license to be smoking marijuana right or carrying a gun and then you're being arrested and then they'll still say oh but it's because i'm rich i'm black i'm famous that's why you're harassing me but you're mm. doing the wrong thing brother you have a gun on you mm. you're smoking marijuana mm. uh, 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 what's it called controlled substance so at the end of the day i think we also need to come correct when we actually yeah. want to pull out the race card yeah. so um if Cardi B and her sister, NSC, <laughs> that's so funny, <laughs> Cardi and NSC did this, um, I just hope they I get think drunk. I parents did that deliberately, I'm pretty sure. They probably had some uh, voodoo type funny parents back then to name their children, Cardi B, uh, Cardi and oh, NSC. Maybe they just had drunken parents. Maybe. All right, so um, Tea Time continues right after this break. Stay tuned. Aquaba, and this is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. By my introduction, you should know that we're going all the way to Ghana. As actress Yvonne Nelson says, Ghanaian politicians resort to the use of English language in order to steal from the people because most Ghanaians have issues with comprehension of the Queen's language. According to her, her 
most Ghanaians do not have a better appreciation of the Queen's language. Therefore, these politicians resort to using it for their activities and dealings, just so the people will not get a grasp of what they are doing. These politicians rob the country of billions of cities while the people of Ghana cheer and spoil them on. It's kind of funny. Very funny. It's kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean, I've been there. They speak English. I don't know why. <laughs> If you didn't know anything about Ghana, you would think that she's talking about some like village you know? thoughts that nobody there speaks English and stuff. Not, not that it's a problem not to speak English, but that's just not the case. I think Ghanaians don't understand English. I don't and think the English-speaking from... Ghanaians, I even feel they have a better understanding of the Queen's English. To be honest, we make fun of them or we make jest of them when they pronounce her as her, mm. when they pronounce them. Um, church as church mm. and stuff like that but if you actually have to go with the english queen's english they're mm. actually correct no they're not most times well, not they're, all they're, the time most times i can say that they're closer but more correct that they are nigeria. closer than nigerians yes they yes. are closer but you see the problem nigerians. isn't the pronunciations i feel like we all pronounce Niger I, I, we all pronounce well it's the accents you see even if you have even if you know how to pronounce the words clearly they still sound Ghanaian, and it's influenced by Tree and Ga and all the languages mm. in there. So the mother tongue would always influence their right pronunciations. I don't even care. I don't think we need to sound like the queen. Um, it did come on a boat and we had our own language here mm -hmm. already when mm -hmm. these people arrived with their language. So and they didn't leave with our language. Exactly. But they so left their language. I, with I us. personally don't even like that idea that we have to. Um, you know, uh, sound like them or whatever. There's no problem with that. But I think Ghanaians speak English. I think they understand. A lot. I don't think the government... Maybe... Do you remember that guy? He used to be popular on the name... Um, uh, Pythagoras... Uh, <laughs> that, do, you, do you know the guy I'm talking about? I know. He, he sounds uses, familiar. He uses big words to... Was In Nigeria. To, I don't think he was Nigerian. I think he was actually Ghanaian. Um, or stuff. I was in something, something, No, he's Nigerian. Oh, I can't remember yeah, now. No. He's Nigerian. Um, uh, I wish someone could tell me his name, yeah. but keep going. Anyway, so that guy, he was training a lot on the memes where he would basically try as hard as possible to use the, <laughs> the most, in, like, the most ridiculous statement, words and stuff to mm. basically confuse people. If the politicians in Ghana were talking like that, then I would agree to would her understand. point. But I've heard politicians talk. When I was studying there, I w it was when they were actually having an election. And I saw a lot of um, their manifestos and how they were pushing and campaigning and stuff. A lot of it is actually quite in their local language. Thank you. One, quite a lot of it is in local language. And the English that they now finally added to it wasn't rocket science. So Thank you. That's the same um, train of thoughts I have on this one because I, I feel like they even own their local languages way more than we do. Yes. So I think when they're even doing their campaign and they're talking about their manifestos and mm. stuff, they say it in a local language yeah. so their that songs, everybody can are... be carried along. Yeah. And then when they speak the English, it's not like something that a layman would understand. Yeah. It's something that we would all get it at the end of the yeah. day. So I don't know where you even know. Is coming maybe from, she's talking think... about policies maybe she's talking about written documents because i know sometimes the policies mm. and stuff can be confusing True. but that has nothing to even do with ghana or the people policies are meant to be written that in that style in that manner very um you know it's not it's not a text message you know it has to be like formally written a formal language it's quite different from how we speak our regular english but you're saying majority of ghanaians don't understand english though i i i don't know how to I, I mean I, I really you know sometimes you go to some places i live in ghana so you go to some places and then you expect them to speak english or you want to mm -hmm. buy something mm -hmm. and then they start asking you questions like, yeah. oh, you're Nigerian. How long have you been? And you don't mm. still know how to speak tree because the moment they see you, they just want to speak tree. Mm. But it's not like in Nigeria yeah, where we have the pidgin English that is can be used in place of. So even a regular person that cannot speak so much English mm. can still speak the regular pidgin English and then we can communicate. But over there, it's kind of hard. You get like the I see, English. I yeah, mean, there's still a lot of people reduced. in Nigeria that don't know how to speak English or don't understand English. I know... People in Lagos that don't know how to speak English. But they speak Pigeon. Uh, Think mm, about that. They still, how far now? They, I want, I mean, I want Yoruba, by Yoruba, Yoruba you know? people that don't understand anything else but Yoruba. They will still speak a little bit of pidgin. I don't think it's it's that common for you to see and a Lagosian. In, in Ghana, they will speak a little bit of their 
of their pigeons? They, I don't know, but compared to Nigeria, in I comparison so. to Nigeria, Nigeria is definitely doing better in that space. In that, in, like speaking, understanding English. Yeah. I guess yeah. so, because they speak more of their local languages as well. But man, we'll let our Ghanaian brothers and sisters tell us if you have announced and it's correct. But for now, we have to go. But tea time isn't over as the tea never stops coming. But we got to go brew some more. But thank you for watching. Remember, you can catch up on our previous episodes, including this one and all our exclusive content, by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Outer TV and in London on Ben Television. A big thank you goes to my co-anchor, Ifeo Mai, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Ifeo Loa, Ocean Care. Thank you.